Hello everybody, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the episode. In this episode, I'll be using the legendary Jaguar XJ220 at Tokyo Expressway. So in this video, I'll show you guys where to find the car and the course delivery that I'll be using this episode as well. And most importantly, the build itself of how to get the car set up for this particular race at Tokyo Expressway. And after I show you guys the build for the car, I'll then show you guys the race itself. Uh, just in case if you guys are curious of how well the car performs. And trust me, this car performs very strong in this race. I really recommend you guys watching the rest of the, of the video. If not, you can go ahead and skip ahead um, either to the setup or whatever you want to skip to. Other than that, let us get straight into uh, the video. So in order to find the car, it is right now at the Legends Car Dealership. It's actually new, so it's just now dropped. Uh, it's going to be the third car that you'll see in the line. It's going to cost you about 615,000 credits, so mainly just win them all once and you're good to go. As you can see, it's right at 590 points, uh, right around that criteria area, so I don't really need that many parts. Uh, for this car in order for it to be, to be very competitive at Tuck Expressway. But as you can see, there's over 500 pounds of horsepower, about 475 pounds for the torque, and the car is a little bit over 3,000 pounds, not to mention it is a turbocharger as well. So over than that, a fairly decently good, decent stats for this car. So as we get a much closer detailed look on the car, just for really quick, this car is very iconic. Um, Especially in the good old days of both in Gran Turismo 3 and Gran Turismo 4. I can remember just driving this car a good bit. Especially the race car edition, the LM race car version. Very iconic as well. Um, so I really recommend you guys go ahead and get this car while it's still out. And trust me, you will not regret it. It's a really strong, good car. So that's how you get the car. Just make sure you just get over 685,000 credits and you're good to go. Moving on now to uh, GT Auto, as you guys can see, I actually got the car all souped up. I actually got a custom livery for this car. If you guys are curious what this livery is, I actually made this livery just before the race. Um, I'll go ahead and share it with y'all just real quick. So in my gallery, um, if you guys don't follow me in the game, I actually made a carbon and black uh, number 41 LM prototype car. So those are the keyword searches if you want to look up delivery. Uh, it's GT, LM, and carbon as the keyword searches. It's just basically the same car as you'll see the LM uh, race car from Grand Missile 4, but the car is carbon fiber and the decals are black. That's the only thing that's kind of different with the car. But if you guys do not want the livery, but instead you want the parts, if you're curious what the parts consist of in this car, no problem. I'll be able to go ahead and share that with y'all. For the rims, it's going to be Oz Racing Super Turismo LM. Make sure the width and the offset is wide and make sure the size is the biggest as it possibly can go. After you get that rim selection installed, what you'll think going to do next is go to your custom parts. Make sure the front is type B. For the side, it's going to be type A. And for the wing, it's going to be type A. And that's going to be it uh, for car customization um, at GT Auto. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So here we are now with the setup at Tuck Expressway. Uh, first things first, uh, we're going to have Sport Hards as our tire toys once again in this race. Uh, for suspension, uh, you don't have to worry about anything about it, so just keep it as it is normal. Differential, make sure it's fully customized. And I recommend having the torque set to 5, acceleration to 5, and the braking to 25. As we move to aerodynamics, uh, the front is going to be 101. The rear is going to be about 350 max it out. Uh, the ECU, make sure you have the full control computer equipped and make sure it is set to 100. Uh, the transmission is going to be fully customized manual transmission. It's going to be set to 340 for your top speed automatically. As we move to the other part of the sheet, uh, you do need the anti-lag system. Make sure you set that to strong. Racing intercooler. Racing exhaust manifold. Racing brake system and racing brake pads. After that, uh, you'll then need the clutch and flywheel, set that to racing, and a few parts like stroke up, polish boards, racing crankshaft, and increased body density. And that's going to be it uh, for this build. So, like I mentioned before, not really that many parts that are needed in this car. You just need to select the parts, and you're good to go. So, as we get the race started, you can see the car actually they, does take off pretty nicely. Uh, we're going to be right inside the top 10 as we head out the tunnel. The car does have really good speed as well, um, 
so far the fastest car in the main straight. So you can see we're making a lot of spots in the opening of this race. As we approach the first turn, we're going to pass the Porsche, moving us up to P6. So a very good start for us as we're behind GTR uh, as we head to the other next corner of this right-hander. And you can see, we will see the GTR actually throws the car a little bit deeper into the corner. Actually overshots it. Uh, we're going to be very close, but thankfully we can keep the car clean. Not make any contact as we move inside the top five. So you can see we have the older Impreza super bright in front of us and the RX-7. And the leader isn't that too far ahead either. So we, this is a good start so far for our run. Um, we're going to make a lot more time on the top three right here as we head toward the our cockpit cam make a very nice move on the rx7 right there moving us to fourth place and we're going to be very careful as we're going to really easily climb behind the impreza we're going to move right on its inside we have the perfect line heading to this next corner we're going to force it wide which we actually do and we're going to move ourselves to p3 even though the supra doesn't get that much traction we're going to give it a little bump um and just like that we're going to move ourselves to p2 uh, right about over halfway on lap 1, we force it wide, it hits the wall, uh, but like that, we move ourselves to P2. So other than that, it's been a really good climb progress for us so far. And like I mentioned before, the car really does have some really nice acceleration and speed. So as we head to that right hand turn, uh, the car actually is really good uh, through this part of the track as well. So as we're in first gear, we're going to short shift to second gear as we get to the throttle, even though we probably should have stayed in second gear through this turn. But I could just tell the car just has some really good traction uh, in that last corner, so you really shouldn't have that much issue um, with that right last corner. But if you do, what I recommend doing is switching your traction control to number one, and then once you negotiate carefully that last turn, then turn it off and you're good to go. But as you can see, the first lap we're done. I'll start lap two, a good start with us. Sorry from last place up to P2. And you can see we're just barely, slowly but surely catching down the leader as we have the speed advantage as well uh, in this race. So as we get to that very first breaking point, it's going to be late into that turn. We're going to break. As we see that first 200 sign breaking pretty hard. And you can see we're catching up a lot more time on leader. Um, making ourselves a good spot. Uh, getting ready for this other part of the track. Let's see if we can do something with this. So as you can see, there's just two of us right up front. Here's the GTR late in the picture. So we have a huge cushion between ourselves and third place. But right now we're mainly focused on the leader. And just like that, we got ourselves a better turn into this corner. And you can see the car is just so smooth um, in these corners as well. As we head to the first underpass, heading to the chicane, we're very much close with the leader within range. Uh, we're going to make a move on the outside, or we're going to try to at least see if we can actually do something with it. Uh, but we're going to actually back out of it, and we're going to set ourselves a better spot, tucking behind the leader, and then we're going to force ourselves, just like we did the lap prior with the Impreza, force it on the outside. But we don't get the best run, so we're side by side, we actually give ourselves some plenty of room, we actually do script the walls a little bit, but thankfully, Coming up to the hill, we actually do clean off the Honda NSX, and just like that, we're going to take the lead in this race, even though the Honda is pretty much close in behind us. Um, but once we actually do get back on the main straight, uh, we actually do have the speed advantage, and just like that, we're going to mainly run away with it uh, from the rest of the, of the drivers. Um, so yeah, a very fun battle with the Honda, uh, but we thankfully did prevail right at the end of lap two. And just like that, we're going to keep our head down and basically run away with it. Uh, from this race so yeah a very strong quick car uh, in this race as well so let's fast forward now to our pit stop lap which is gonna be lap six as you guys can see I actually am driving on the front bumper cam something new something different and I actually enjoy driving this cam this is actually the first time I actually drove in this cam for a long time so you can see lap six uh, the tires are in excellent condition uh, so we're gonna come inside pit road and get ourselves just fuel only uh, for this scheduled stop. Now the only painful thing about this is that we'll have to wait until that bar is at the end until uh, we have enough fuel to finish off the race. But it's pretty painful uh, but it's one thing that we have to endure uh, in this strategy. But like I said just add fuel. Uh, the tires are in really good shape so you, you don't really have to worry about the tire wear. The tires easily grain away. Uh, they're pretty strong and pretty durable so just get fuel only. Save you some time and just like that you'll be back on your way. Let's fast forward now to what will be lap 10. This is going to be our hot lap of the race. Just to show you guys how quick this car really is around the track. As you can see, we actually hit the 206 barrier. 
Uh, mainly averaging about 207s uh, from lap 3 onward. And we just now did a 206.826, but this lap is going to be our fastest lap of the race. So just to show you guys a quick guide around the lap with this car, just to see what the car is really capable of doing. As you can see, the speed itself is pretty good. Over 20 miles per hour, we're going to break. As soon as we get through that first checkpoint, we're going to break as soon as we get close to that 200 sign. Uh, we're going to be right at third gear. Uh, we're going to do some little trail braking. Halfway to the apex, you should be close to full throttle, just like that. We're going to break again. Uh, having a strong arc about halfway through the turn, slowly back full throttle. As we head to the first underpass, uh, we should be right at fourth gear. Um, as we cross the bridge, we're going to break a little bit, let the car run naturally, and then about halfway to the apex, uh, full throttle. As you can see, we're hit purple in that sector. Brake hard, and same thing just like the first turn. We're going to break, shift to third gear as we go below that 50 sign. Then we're going to go full throttle, let go the pedal, back on the power, right there. Then we're going to shift the fourth gear. As we hit the next bridge, uh, we're going to brake, let stay in fourth gear, let the car gravity take control. Uh, back to the power, as soon as we get the car straightened out. And then at the 50 meter sign, we're going to brake, let the car roll naturally, and then back on the power. Keeping the car straight as possible can as well. As we head up the hill, uh, we're going to brake between the 50 and 100 meter sign. This time we're going down the third gear. Um, back on the power, make sure the car is right at that white sketch line, and then once you see those white lines break up on that apex, back on the power as we go down the hill, lean that right hand turn. As I mentioned before, uh, the car actually does handle pretty nicely through this corner, so what you're going to do is going to brake. After you pass that first yellow sign, we're going to brake and go down the second gear. Those right tires, make sure they're right at that curb or over it. So we get back on the throttle, uh, the car should grip still as you pass that uh, curb, third gear, and then through the whole rest of the lap is going to be full throttle. So this car has some really nice, decently good handling. As you guys can see, I actually was able to get back on the throttle pretty easily and early in the corners. Or just let the car roll naturally, uh, which is pretty nice, soothing sensation. So as we cross the finish line, it's going to be a 206.434. So a pretty quick lap overall in this track, especially with this car. So as we get down with this race, uh, like I said, this car was very strong the whole entire race. Really enjoyed how it drove it drove very smoothly it's going to be a pretty quick 26 17 as our total time so pretty quick total time overall using the jaguar xj220 uh really enjoyed how the car handled very strong handling car very good acceleration very good gripping uh car as well 206.434 was our last lap on lap 10 which i just now showed you guys uh but yeah i really recommend giving this car a shot it's just really good car um, overall, I know I did it uh, last year, it was decently good, but this year in particular is a lot stronger. And as you can see, we got the basic finish uh, rewards because we made contact with a lap car. We had a Dodge Viper in the way, it kind of pushed him a good bit, and that's probably what cost us. Other than that, uh, a very strong car, so I really recommend you guys getting this car out and just trying it yourself at Tuck Expressway. Now, if it doesn't work out for you at Tuck Expressway, then what I recommend doing is saving this car at Le Mans. Just seeing how strong it is on the straights and also seeing how smooth it was on the corners. So, hopefully, this video will help you out at Tuck Expressway using the Jaguar XJ220. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you did, in fact, enjoy the episode, why not leave a like? If you guys are interested or would like to see some more of my content, when I go ahead and subscribe channel as well, which would be very helpful. And if you guys would like to check out my last episode, I covered using the uh, Maserati Maroc SS right there. You can click on the video right up there. Uh, another full build guide as well on that car. If you guys want to check it out, you can. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of the day or night, whatever it might be. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.